from your perspective, both as a robotic expert and an artist, do you think that a robot can ever be creative? Ah, no, I do not. I think we have never seen a, a creative robot or a creative computer, in my experience. I think that there are many examples of programming robots to do things that might be interpreted that way, but to really be creative is to innovate, to generate something new, and to recognize that it's in fact new. And I don't think we're in any danger mm. of, uh, of, of machines, robots, or computers starting to take that over from mm. humans. Now, I know I may be in the minority, but <laughs> I don't think so. And there are examples of robots or computers making music or writing poetry, but those are just examples of chance. Every once in a while something interesting happens, but it is not consistent. There is no consistently creative output mm. from a machine. Mm. There has been quite a lot of sensationalism or you know, a really fierce debate around the question whether artificial intelligence will ultimately surpass human cognitive abilities. Um, I know that you disagree with that, with that thesis. Um, can you elaborate why, why you do? Why, why can we still be not optimistic about that? OK, well, mm. optimistic in the sense that I'm in, in still the on the side yes. of the humans. Mm. We, have, we have many good years ahead, mm. David. I think that the, there, there's an exaggerated fear right now. And it sometimes uh, can, be, can be described around the term Moore's curse after Moore's law, because there's been this great increase in computing power over the last 20 years. And that leads people to have a unrealistic expectations that this will continue in an exponential form. But the reality is that's, that's a very unusual circumstance, and it's very unlikely to continue at that pace. The, we will see advances, and we are, but we're not in the brink of suddenly computers taking over. Machinery is going to advance. It has done so for thousands thousand years. Every time we've, we've had great fears about it, going back to the Greeks, and the, the history is full of examples from the Golem to Frankenstein of, the, of fear that, that robots or our machines will take over. But we're no closer to that than, than we were 100 years ago. Um, you're an expert in so-called cloud robotics. Um, what is cloud robotics? So cloud robotics is the idea that we can leverage the power of the internet, specifically wireless, very fast wireless communications, to be able to take the computing and the memory from onboard the robot to a remote location. And so that we can gather information remotely, we can access information remotely, and then we can process information remotely. And this is a, a, a real paradigm shift for the field because it allows robots to achieve new levels of sophistication and also share information across robots. So not that this is going to take over humans. We're not, that's not a danger. But robots will become more capable in the next 10 years. Mm. Today, we'd also like to address the question of infrastructure requirements, so in terms of network. Um, do you think we are already there? Or, or you know, what are, what are the, the steps we have to take in order to make these innovations real and make, make them happen? So what we need is faster networks. The, right now, we have very fast download speeds. And the 4G, we're able to watch videos, et cetera. But what we need to be able to do robotics is the ability to do control. So we need the entire turnaround from sensing to the remote location, processing, and then returning back to the robot to be under a millisecond. This is what's sometimes referred to as the tactile internet. So that is 5G. That's something we haven't, we haven't reached yet. Mm -hmm. And that, when that happens, we'll, we'll open up vast new possibilities. Mm. Ken, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.